Hi everyone, and welcome to the first episode of 3D Printing Thursday. We're glad to have you. This is Jesse Hawer, 3D Printing Application Engineer with Hawkridge Systems, and in this video, we'll take a quick look at the overall process of loading MarkForge Precise PLA into a compatible composite printer. Precise PLA is a great cost-effective material for prototyping, for checking form fit function, and it doesn't require any hardware swaps to use. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Now, normally opening a container of 3D printing material isn't exactly a complicated process, but there's a few small tips here that are worth pointing out. So we'll start from the beginning and put step one as, well, open your new box of precise PLA. We've got a nice vacuum sealed bag to keep the moisture out here. And let's go ahead and speed up the opening a bit. The first tip here is that if you have multiple colors or spools of precise PLA and plan on switching between them regularly, you'll want to keep this bag instead of throwing it away. You can see that it's actually Ziploc sealed, and this bag can be used in the future to store partial spools of PLA. Make sure your spool also has a desk pack when you take it out of the bag. Now let's go ahead and get this stuff out of the way and move on to our second handling tip, which is to cut your strand of precise PLA at a 45 degree angle before loading it. Doing this makes it easier for the strand to melt and pass through the print nozzle at first. Okay, so with our spool in hand, we're ready to get it loaded into our dry box at this point. It's a good thing we have this nice handy label pointing out that this is a dry box. Just like with our onyx and other nylon materials on MarkForge machines, we'll put the included desiccant pack into our dry box and then put the spindle into our spool. Once we have this set, we'll feed our material until it sticks a few inches out of the load tube and then fully seal up our dry box to keep the material nice and moisture free. Now, with our material ready to load, we can go ahead and move over to the printer. On the printer side of things, material loading begins just like with any other MarkForge material, which is through Menu, Materials, and Load Plastic. We'll select Meter Load so the printer keeps track of how much we've used, and then select Precise PLA. From here, select the color of what you loaded, and then choose if you've loaded a new spool or a partial one. Our nozzle will then start to heat up. While the nozzle heats, it can be a good idea to remove your plastic Bowden tube from the top of the print head. Don't worry if you forget this though, as the next step of the utility will remind you to do this. After the Bowden tube is removed, and you've gone ahead to the next step of the utility, You'll be using your metal purge rod, which can be purchased through the Hawker System Store using the link in the description, to push any leftover material out of the printhead. As the UI shows, this rod can get hot if the areas closer to the printhead are touched, so just be a bit careful while doing this. You'll want to repeat this motion about 10 to 20 times or until no further material comes out of your nozzle. This is a quick process, and it ensures that the print head is clean before loading PLA through it. When that is done, make sure to clean off your purge rod a bit with your brass wire brush to remove any excess material stuck on it. Also, make sure to do the same with your print nozzles as well with some tweezers or the same brush you just used. When the print head is all ready for loading, Go ahead and reinsert the plastic Bowden tube, like the utility instructs, and then click Next to move on to the final part of loading, which is placing the material into the extruder. Those of you who might be familiar with MarkForge printers will find that this final step is a bit different compared to other plastic materials. Rather than the user manually stopping the loading process, a small amount of material will extrude through the print nozzle just to ensure that the loading of material is complete. You can definitely have something like a small dustpan ready to catch any amount of material that extrudes out of your nozzle, but the PLA will have cooled significantly by the time it reaches the bottom of your printer, so this is not really required. When the extrusion is complete and the UI reaches its final step, you can either press retry if material did not extrude, or you can press cool down or done to finish the utility. Make sure to remove any remaining material from your plastic nozzle once you're done as well. And that's all there is to it. 
Once you have your material loaded, the final step is to prep your print bed for printing. It is recommended to apply two layers of glue to your print bed as precise PLA requires a bit more adhesion than the nylon based materials. An easy way to do this is to apply one layer in the X axis and one in the Y axis to ensure coverage. This application you're seeing here is totally in real time as well. With material loaded and the print bed glued, just move on over to your Iger slicer and start getting some parts ready for prototyping. Thanks everyone for taking time out of your day to join us for this episode of 3D Printing Thursday. Feel free to subscribe to stay up to date with future episodes and to contact us as well if you have any questions. Have a great day and happy printing.